Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I am your host, Liam, aka Himvar, and today I am sharing another poem for Poetry Thursday. Untitled poem, often titled The Wanderer, or The Exile's Lament, by Anonymous, and translated by Kevin Crossley Holland. Often the wanderer pleads for pity and mercy from the Lord, but for a long time, sad in mind, he must dip his oars into icy waters, the lanes of the sea, he must follow the paths of exile. Fate is inflexible. Mindful of hardships, grievous slaughter, the ruin of kinsmen, the wanderer said, Time and again, at the day's dawning, I must mourn all my afflictions alone. There is no one still living to whom I dare open the doors of my heart. I have no doubt that it is a noble habit for a man to bind fast all his heart's feelings, guard his thoughts, whatever he is thinking. The weary in spirit cannot withstand fate, and nothing comes of venting spleen. Wherefore, those eager for glory often hold some ache imprisoned in their hearts. Thus, I had to bind my feelings in fetters, often sad at heart, cut off from my country, far from my kinsmen. After, long ago, dark clods of earth covered my gold friend. I left that place in wretchedness, plowed the icy ways with winter in my heart, and sadness I sought far and wide for a treasure giver, for a man who would welcome me into his meat hall, give me good cheer, for I boasted no friends entertain me with delights. He who has experienced it knows how cruel a comrade sorrow can be to any man who has few loyal friends. For him are the ways of exile, in no wise twisted gold. For him is a frozen body, in no wise the fruits of the earth. He remembers hall retainers and treasure, and how in his youth his gold friend entertained him. Those joys have all vanished. A man who lacks advice for a long while from his loved lord understands this, that when sorrow and sleep together hold the wretched wanderer in their grip, it seems that he clasps and kisses his lord and lays hands and head upon his lord's knees, as he had sometimes done when he enjoyed the gift throne in earlier days. Then the friendless man wakes again and sees the dark waves surging around him, the seabirds bathing, spreading their feathers, frost and snow falling mingled with hail. Then his wounds lie more heavy in his heart, aching for his lord. His sorrow is renewed, the memory of kinsmen sweeps through his mind. Joyfully he welcomes them, eagerly scans his comrade warriors. Then they swim away again. Their drifting spirits do not bring many old songs to his lips. Sorrow upon sorrow attend the man who must send time and again his weary heart over the frozen waves. And thus I cannot think why in the world my mind does not darken when I brood on the fate of brave warriors, how they have suddenly had to leave the meat hall, the bold followers, so this world dwindles day by day and passes away, for a man will not be wise before he has weathered his share of winters in the world. A wise man must be patient, neither too passionate nor too hasty of speech, neither too irresolute nor too rash in battle, not too anxious, too content, nor too grasping, and never too eager to boast before he knows himself. When he boasts, a man must bide his time till he has no doubt in his brave heart that he has fully made up his mind. A wise man must fathom how eerie it will be when all the riches of the world stand waste, as now in diverse places in this middle earth walls stand, tugged at by winds and hung with hoarfrost, buildings in decay. The wine halls crumble, lords lie dead, deprived of joy. All the proud followers have fallen by the wall, battle carried off some, led them on journeys. The bird carried off one over the welling waters, one the gray wolf devoured. A warrior with downcast face hid one in an earth cave. Thus the maker of men laid this world waste, until the ancient works of the giants stood idle, hushed without the hubbub of inhabitants. Then he who has brooded over these noble ruins, and who deeply ponders his dark life, wise in his mind, often remembers the many slaughters of the past, and speaks these words, Where has the horse gone? Where the man? Where the giver of gold? Where is the feasting place? And where are the pleasures of the hall? I mourn the gleaming cup, the warrior in his corslet, the glory of the prince, how that time has passed away, darkened under the shadow of night as if it had never been. Where the loved warriors were, there now stands a wall of wondrous height, carved with serpent forms, savage ash spears, avid for slaughter, have claimed all the warriors, a glorious fate. Storms crash against these rocky slopes, sleet and snow fall and fetter the world. Winter howls, then darkness draws on, the night shadow casts gloom and brings fierce hailstorms to the north to frighten men. Nothing is ever easy in the kingdom of earth. The world beneath the heavens is in the hands of fate. 
Here possessions are fleeting. Here friends are fleeting. Here man is fleeting. Here kinsman is fleeting. The whole world becomes a wilderness. So spoke the wise man in his heart as he sat apart and thought. Brave is the man who holds to his beliefs, nor shall he ever show the sorrow in his heart, for he knows how he can hope to heal it. It is best for a man to seek mercy and comfort from the Father in heaven, where security stands for us all.